Welcome back for another Virtual Family Saturday. While we wish you were able to join us at the Bowdoin College Museum of Art, we are happy to bring the museum to you. In this installment of Family Saturday, we will be revisiting the exhibition, New Views of the Middle Ages, Highlights from the Wyvern Collection. Last time we explored different materials used by artisans in the Middle Ages. Today, we will be talking about some of the books that were produced. Most of what we'll see today are illuminated manuscripts, which are books that feature decorations such as initials, borders, and small illustrations. Unlike the books you have in your home, which are mass printed and mass produced, these manuscripts are handwritten. The handwriting was often done by a scribe, someone who copies and writes down text for the documents we'll see today. Part of a manuscript included the illuminations that adorned each page. An illumination, which literally means to brighten with light, is an addition made to the text, sometimes done with gold leaf, paint, and other materials. The images surrounding the letter or found throughout the pages often depict imagery of animals, plants, and sometimes mythological creatures. To make an illuminated manuscript, the book went through three main stages. First, the parchment maker who prepared the pages of parchment for paper would compile the book together. Then the scribe who made the ink and used quill to copy the text wrote everything down. And lastly, the illuminator brought the literature to life through artwork and color. So now let's take a look at some of these books that we have on view. The first book that we'll see today is called A Book of Hours. A Book of Hours was a richly illustrated prayer book used in the later Middle Ages. They often contain prayers to particular saints, which were selected by the owner. Again, since these books were created by hand, there was a little bit more customization that the owner could have when designing the book. Each prayer featured in the book could be paired with an image of the saint so that the reader can recite the words to the saint. They could imagine the saint receiving their prayer. Here we have St. George depicted as a medieval knight, slaying the dragon. As far as the illumination goes, we see on the right hand side, the inclusion of gold leaf and red and blue paint coloring to create the illuminated letters, which are typically the first letters of the first word of each sentence. We see a big C in the top corner of the right page, along with little illuminations throughout the text. To the left, we can see even more clearly St. George praying on top of a dragon. What would you put on your illustration if you were going to speak to someone special? The next book we'll see today is called a breviary. A breviary is a book used in the Christian church for praying the canonical hours, which was usually prayed seven times a day. Throughout the Middle Ages, manuscripts such as this breviary were important in the development of painting and drawing. Within these hand copied books, medieval artists created illustrations and decorations that interacted with the text, offering readers new ways to view the pages and heightening their experience in sometimes playful and beautiful ways. Here in this illumination, we see the use of red and blue paint, something that we'll see throughout several of the books on view today. We also see the use of gold leaf throughout the illumination, both on the left and the right page. Taking a closer look, we can see that King David is playing his harp in the main and central illumination on the left page. King David was a common figure at the start of the Book of Psalms, 
indicating his role as the author of these songs of praise. We will see another example or two of using figures or people in the illuminations themselves. Only one book we'll see today, an Ethiopian gospel book, incorporates no figures but emphasizes geometric shapes. The next book we're going to look at is huge. It is called the Carysfort Bible, one of three different volumes. It was made in present day France with parchment, ink, paint, and gold. Again, we can see how the illuminations are focused around the beginning of the first word of different sentences. We don't see as much illumination as the other book we saw, the Book of Hours, but there is some additional illumination featured at the top of each page. This book, this Bible rather, is one of several examples that we'll see today that are books made for religious use. Text and religion were connected in the Middle Ages, and so a lot of the examples that we have today and in this exhibition feature books that were used for religious purposes. Let's take a closer look at the illumination. In these illuminations, we can see the unique addition of figures or people shown in each one. The one on the right features a saint identified by his gold halo speaking to someone, perhaps an angel, based on the fact that the angel or the person is coming from above. In this illumination, we see the strong use of gold leaf in the background, which would have given this book or this Bible a sense of shine for the reader. The illumination on the left seems to feature a mythological creature based on the dragon-like face in the top right corner and some additions of legs. In addition to that, we see plant motifs in red and blue, as well as the use again of gold leaf in the background. Again, illuminations were used to heighten or to increase the visual experience and the reading experience of the viewer, giving more attention to their devotional act or focus on their prayers. The last book that we'll see today is the Gies Gospel Book, created in present-day Ethiopia, which is in East Africa. Similar to the Carysfort Bible that we saw, we see the use of illumination with text to emphasize the text itself. Here, however, there are no figures represented in the illuminations seen at the top of each page, but there is the inclusion of birds and geometric shapes featured in a half circle. This gospel book was likely used to recite hymns or other gospels during worship. Today we saw four examples of illuminated manuscripts, books that show different illustrations to enhance the experience for the reader. All of the books that we saw today were used for religious purposes, either people in the church that were reading or reciting during the sermon or used by people, common people, to enhance their devotional acts. For today's activity, we are going to be creating our own illuminated letters using a letter of your choosing you can design your own illumination incorporating plants, animals, creatures, whatever you like. I'll give you some examples on the screen here. Here's what you'll need. Drawing paper, a pencil, pen, and an eraser, a ruler, an idea of the letter you want to create, perhaps the first letter of your first name, and a theme or important items to place around your letter. You'll also want some markers, crayons, or colored pencils, and you can use the yellow or orange ones to imitate gold leaf that was used throughout the illuminations we saw today. 
you can also use some tin foil and glue it down in or around your letter to create a, the same visual effect. Here's how to make your own illuminated letter. Make a one inch indent with your paper to make a border for your letter. Then in the center of your border, you want to draw out your letter first in pencil and then outline it in border and pen. Then you can get creative with drawing your letter. Make it large enough to add any designs in it or around it. And then you want to start drawing anything you want. It can be as simple or as detailed as you desire. Also, remember to color or make a design in the border you made. Lastly, begin coloring in your illumination and get really creative with it. Thank you for joining us for today's Virtual Family Saturday. I hope you enjoyed yourself, learned something new, and had fun doing the activity. Please join us later in the semester when we focus on Impressionism for an upcoming online exhibition that we're creating. I hope to see you then. Have a great day.